Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. Our video for today is all about myocardial infarction. Two years ago, I made a discussion about it, but this time, I want to make it direct to the point and easy to understand. We will talk about the most common topic like the risk factors, key manifestations, diagnostic exams, management, and nursing interventions. I also included exam questions and try to watch everything until the end because every piece of information is vital, especially when you will take your exams. So if you want to learn more and understand MI, let's start. What is MI? It is an irreversible tissue death of the myocardium due to severe or prolonged blockage. What are the risk factors? First, we have smoking. It causes coronary vasospasm and it also puts the person at risk due to its toxic substances. Next is family history. Then we have sedentary lifestyle due to lack of physical activity. For the age, Greater than 45 years old for male, while greater than 55 years of age for female. We have what we call the wear and tear theory, which means that as we grow older, our body organs will also deteriorate. For the gender, it is male, most probably due to their lifestyle. While for the race, it is the African American. Next is the obesity. Most of them have a high lipid profile, like bad cholesterol and triglyceride levels. These stick to the wall of the arteries and produce plaques that block the blood flow to the arteries. Type A personality. Usually, they have a stressful life because they are hyperactive, impulsive, and perfectionist. Finally, we have chronic diseases like hypertension and diabetes mellitus. Having high blood pressure damages the arteries. As the blood pressure increases, your risk of developing heart problems will also be high. While for DM, having a high blood sugar level can cause blood viscosity that can damage the blood vessels and can eventually lead to coronary artery disease. Key manifestations. First, we have a feeling of impending doom. Next, a chest pain that radiates to the left arm and does not subside with rest and nitrates. Due to the continuous decrease in oxygen supply, the patient will experience shortness of breath, increased heart rate, and contractility. This occurs when the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated to release epi and norepi due to decreased cardiac output. Before we proceed to our next topic, here is a question for you. Patient Whoops was rushed to ER due to a complaint of severe chest pain. The initial diagnosis was MI due to her ECG result. As a nurse, you expect that the physician will order this test to confirm the diagnosis. You can pause if you want to try to answer, but if not, the correct answer is B. Let's proceed to diagnostic exams. ECG To a patient with MI, the expected ECG result is T-wave inversion, ST segment elevation, and pathologic Q-wave. Next, cardiac markers like troponin I, CKMB, and myoglobin. Trop I is the most recommended diagnostic test due to its sensitivity and accuracy. Troponin should not be found in the serum of a normal person because it will only be released when myocardial necrosis occurs. Next is CKMB, which is a creatinine kinase found in the myocardial muscle. Time is vital 
because its level increases within 3 to 12 hours on the onset of chest pain, reach its peak value within 24 hours, and it will return to baseline after 48 to 72 hours. Finally, myoglobin. It can be detected in the blood 1 to 4 hours after myocardial injury or chest pain, peaks within 4 to 12 hours, and then immediately returns to baseline levels. We also have cardiac catheterization. This is an invasive procedure to diagnose and assess the extent of the blockage, and at the same time, to treat certain cardiovascular conditions. Here is another question for you. Which of the following pre-op teaching should the nurse inform the patient who is scheduled for coronary artery bypass graft? The correct answer is B. High-calorie diet is encouraged after the procedure to promote healing. Let's now proceed to management. First, oxygen administration. Then, administer morphine as ordered. Note, always check the vital signs, especially the respiratory rate due to possible adverse effects of the medication, which is respiratory depression. Always prepare Narcan, which is the antidote for morphine toxicity. Next, lidocaine. It is the drug of choice for the presence of dysrhythmias. But if the patient has an allergy to this medication, the other option is procainamide. I also included some other important medications. Antiplatelet drugs to prevent new clot formation and existing clots from growing. Antihypertensive drugs to lower blood pressure and decrease the severity of damage and stress to the heart. Thrombolytic and anticoagulant medication to dissolve the clots. Finally, cardiac glycosides or digitalis medication to lower the heart rate and strengthen the contraction of the heart. Note, monitor heart rate and for signs and symptoms of digitalis toxicity. We also have some invasive procedures. The goal is to minimize myocardial damage, preserve myocardial function, and prevent complications. First is percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. This is done to restore the blood flow to the coronary arteries. This is the insertion of a long, thin tube or catheter in the blocked artery. Once it reaches the blocked artery, they will inflate a small balloon to reopen the artery that was being blocked. This will allow the blood to flow again. The surgeon may also put a stent to prevent the artery from closing again. Next procedure is a terectomy. It is the removal of plaques that block the coronary artery. In this procedure, there may be tiny bleeds or a rotating tip on the end of the catheter to remove the plaque. Lastly, coronary artery bypass graft. To improve the poor blood flow to the heart, this procedure takes blood vessels from another part of the body like the arteries from the arm or chest, or veins from the legs. Then, it will be connected to the near-affected blood vessels by passing the block or narrowed artery. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.